And arriving in my email box just an hour ago, Nikon is developing the Nikkor Z28 to 135F4 power zoom. That's what the PZ stands for. A standard zoom lens for the Nikon Z mount system. A lens with power zoom for video creators. Nikon is pleased to announce the ongoing development of the Nikkor Z28 135mm f4 PZ, a standard zoom lens that is compatible with full frame FX format mirrorless cameras for which the Nikon Z mount has been adopted. The Nikkor Z28 to 135 is a standard zoom lens with a power zoom that covers the focal length range from 28 to 135mm. It is designed to provide ease of use and superior optical performance for video recording, supporting efficient recording for documentaries and location work by a solo videographer or small crew. Nikon will continue to pursue a new dimension in optical performance while meeting users' needs, contributing to the development of imaging culture with the hope of expanding possibilities for imaging expression. Okay, well, everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you and I'm very excited we've had this development announcement regarding the 28 to 135 PZ power zoom at f4 now I did speculate it might be a 2.8 of course that was speculation based on an image and of course in the market we already have from Sony a 28 to 135 f4 power zoom that Sony lens can probably tell us a fair bit about what we might expect from the Nikon equivalent now of course Nikon already has something pretty similar. It is a 24 to 120 f4 S class lens. It's a zoom. By the look of this new zoom, all of the zooming is internal, unlike what we see here. That's how the Sony version works. Along with that, it is a power zoom. That means there's a powered mechanism within the zoom to give us our 28 to 135. And what that allows for is super smooth zooms. Now, right now, we are sitting at 135. We're on the 135 planner. Now I'm gonna put on the 28 f 2.8. And here we are on the 28 millimeter 2.8. This is what it looks like holding in my hand here, the gorgeous 135 1.8 planner that we were just shooting on. Now we're gonna go back to that. And we're back from that lens. So that gives you an idea of what 28 to 135 can look like. It is a 4.8 times zoom. So this is really exciting. Now, obviously Nikon has been moving into the video space for a long time. The Z9 came out as a video powerhouse and that was in 2021. That camera was probably in development for three or four years prior to that. So Nikon have been thinking about video for a long time. My guess is this lens and its development predates the Nikon purchasing of RED. If I was making this lens, of course, I will make it compatible with any future Z RED products, which of course it will be. We all believe that Nikon will create some Z mount RED cameras, which of course will be completely compatible with Nikon's extraordinary range of Z mount lenses. As I said, it's a 4.8 times zoom. It's all internal. It's powered. We can see a rocker switch on the side of the lens, which hopefully is speed controllable. In other words, you can just inch the zoom very slowly, or you can push it the full distance and it moves quickly. Really hoping that it's that sort of level of professional videographer lens. Now, of course, Nikon is stating in their press release, it's designed for videographers, solo operators, or small teams. And thus, I'd totally be expecting that from this lens. Also, by looking at the image, we have the usual control ring, potentially a mechanical zoom ring, maybe, maybe not, and potentially a focus ring, or perhaps all of the rings are programmable, so you can do whatever you want to do. It's hard to tell whether all three areas are controllable, but at least two of them will be. Now, the Sony version of this lens is currently around two and a half thousand US dollars. I would expect this lens to be coming in at a similar sort of price. Now let's talk about when will it arrive. Well, I have no idea. This is a development announcement. We've had development announcements that have lasted like nine months, and we've had development announcements that have been shorter, like three months. So I think it could be anywhere between three to nine months when we actually see this lens ship. 
Now, Sony's version of this lens is 105 by 160 odd millimeters, which is four inches by six and a half inches. And it comes in at 1.2 kilograms or around 42 ounces. And that's without the tripod mount. By the look of it, this lens is going to be very similar. Now, the Sony version of this lens is stabilized. It does have stabilization within it. Whether Nikon will choose to do that or not, I am unsure because their internal stabilization on Z8, Z9, ZF and Z63 are also good. But conversely, if you're aiming this at small crew or solo videographers, everything that can be done to assist that crew, that team, that single person to get stable shots and create content quickly. I would like to see stabilization within this lens. It's hard to say if we'll get it. We're shooting on the 135 right now and it is stabilized magnificently when it's on all of those cameras that I just talked about. So it may not be necessary, but then of course, getting that extra stabilization for when you're walking around or when you're running and gunning or maybe you're a news or documentary crew and you're chasing the action, as much stabilization as you can get is absolutely welcome. So I think it could go either way as to whether this lens is stabilized. And I do wonder if there's sort of an absolute limit on optical mechanical stabilization. But what we can see in say the Panasonic S52X is that it has superb stabilization, which is just a, another little step above what we see in say a Z63. And thus potentially if the right mechanism is put within future bodies, we can get more than we have today. And of course we could get more, I believe, if we have it in the lens as well. Now, of course, this is less of an issue at 28 millimeters, but again, anywhere that we can have support when we're on the run or on the move, is I think very welcome from my perspective. Let's talk a little bit about that focal range. When you're an APS-C crop, it becomes a 42 to 202 millimeter field of view equivalent. Now, of course, in video, we're not so worried about resolution because 4K seems to be very much a ubiquitous standard at this point in time. And almost all of Nikon's full frame cameras will give you a 4K APS-C crop and thus, this lens becomes effectively a 28 at its widest end when full frame, all the way up to a 202 millimeter lens, effectively at 4K. That makes it a really useful and powerful system all in the one package. It is an F4, not the fastest lens on the planet, but that keeps the size down. And I think that's really important when you're running and gunning. Now, of course, on the Z8 and the Z9, we also have the 2.3 times crop and 2.3, that's gonna take us out to, just a quick calc in my head, somewhere near 300 millimeters field of view equivalent, thus making that lens even more effective and useful when on the Z8 and the Z9, you're still getting 4K. Right now, Nikon give us that 2.3 times at 100 frames and 120 frames per second. I would love them to do that at 24 frames per second as well. I would use it just to get extra reach when I don't always need it to be slow motion. Now, another thing that we can expect from this lens, it, uh, it exists in the Sony lens, is the fact that there is no focus shift or focus breathing with this lens. These are high quality, high grade optical lenses. I would expect nothing less from this lens. And of course, Nikon are putting the gold ring on the mount of this lens, and thus they're absolutely broadcasting to us. They expect this to be an optically magnificent lens. I can't wait, I'm really excited to see it. Another component of this lens that I'm super excited about is the fact that it's mechanically controlled, the zoom, will I be able to be in a position like this and I can zoom using a remote control, my phone, whatever devices I have. I think we've already seen that with the APS-C power zoom that already exists in the Z range. And thus, I'm really hoping this will also be remote controllable. That's just another cool potentiality. All right, everybody, well, there it is, the development announcement on the 28 to 135 PZ F4. I'm pumped. I can't wait for it to turn up. As I said, I'm expecting somewhere between three to nine months, somewhere in there. It might hit the market. Who knows? This does sound like a, a quite early development announcement, uh, but you know, that could mean anything. I'd love to know what you think about this lens in the comments below. So please do share your thoughts. 
It's been so good to see you, and if this is your first time here, I would absolutely love to see you again, so please do subscribe, please share, and please like. All right, bye for now.